Welcome back, everybody. We're back with the YouTube series on this voice meter, voice meter banana, and voice meter potato. It's all the same concepts, all the same software, just how you extend it out. We're here to show you guys how to go over MME, KS, the ASIO, and also the WDM, and how those work and what they are. So all of those that I mentioned are audio interfaces, and they basically help with audio in general and how bitrate is transferring in and out, serialization and deserialization. So some of the points I wanna go over is how this is a series and it's um, adding on more logic. And within this video, we're going in deep detail and a few videos before we went in deep detail on the um, async, um, on the sync offset, and also on how to use the best settings for OBS. So it's basically how you would uh, accumulate a lot of information and make it more technical as you go. So in further videos, we're gonna get more and more technical and deep where we're going over registry and how to use the command line. So stuff like that. I'm really glad you guys are here. If you guys were stuck, definitely go back and watch the previous videos because like I said, it's going to accumulate. So let's get right into it. I'm just going to go over some of the definitions and some of the understandings of the interfaces. First, I have uh, some files I'm going to share with you guys down in the description. It's basically just these HTML files and you're able to see them and it's on uh, Wikipedia. The first one is MME and MME is an audio interface and this is uh, is well supported inside of voice reader and the uh, idea of MME is to use it as a API. So like an API is basically an application uh, programming interface where you're able to use someone else's code in another piece of software. So that's what an API is. And uh, an MME API is a Windows Multimedia API and is also known as uh, WinMM. It was the uh, first universal and standardized Windows audio API. This audio interface type is expected to work with whenever uh, audio device, uh, but with latency of possibly around 100 ms. So uh, some further instruction on how um, MME is. Um, MME is basically um, one of uh, Windows first um, audio interfaces. So. Some more description on it, the uh, multimedia extensions. Uh, this type of interface, it was used to be uh, released in 1991 and to support sound cards as well as CD-ROMs. So the multimedia extensions were released to original equipment manufacturers. So mainly uh, CD-ROMs that I mentioned and sound card manufacturers uh, added in basic multimedia support to audio input and output and a CD audio player uh, applications to Windows 3.0. So then uh, the multimedia extensions, the new features were not available in Windows 3.0 uh, remote, only in standardized or only in standard and 386 enhanced mode. So Windows 3.1 X would later incorporate many of its features. Microsoft developed the Windows sound system sound specifications to complement these extensions. So you guys can read through the rest. Uh, this is basically what the multimedia extensions are. So then I'll show you here in uh, voice meter. So I'll go back and forth to voice meter and some articles I'm gonna have down in the description. So basically uh, I use the uh, MME really with uh, certain microphones and uh, it really depends on how you wanna set it up, but uh, that's just the basic information of MME. Uh, I mainly, yeah, so I have a active microphone here just for the voice mod and I have a separate video on that as well. And then here's my physical mic. And this is using a WDM, which I'll get into um, in a little bit. Next is KS, the kernel streaming. I haven't really used as much, but it's another audio interface that's in voice meter, voice meter banana and voice meter potato. The kernel streaming or direct kernel streaming API allows low latency audio streaming since Windows XP, but unfortunately not all audio devices provide this interface. So. So that's why I don't use much because physical inputs and virtual inputs don't really have this interface. I try to really keep everything on WDM, which will be the next one we'll get into. So the kernel streaming was introduced in Windows 98. When the sound card uses a custom driver to use with the system supplied class, like what the hell? So then more about the kernel streaming. Kernel streaming was introduced in Windows 98. When the sound card uses a custom driver to use with the system supply port class driver, port CIS, if I can see, I have bad eyes, uh, SYS, 
um, or implements a mini driver to use with the streaming class driver and applications can bypass the K mixer, which uh, is something that we're not going over because it's not in the uh, voice reader software. The K mixer completely and use the kernel streaming interfaces instead of instead to directly interact with audio driver and reduce latency. Windows 98 includes the first kernel streaming driver system uh, SYS and that's uh, that's just an acronym from system in Windows XP and Microsoft introduced another improved kernel uh, kernel streaming class driver uh, AV stream so um, in voice meter it is the generic KS it's not the uh, AV stream or the uh, the other uh, KS type of uh, interface it's just the general KS interface so uh, just be aware of what your physical and virtual inputs are using and be able to uh, use the correct one. All right, so let's get into WDM. WDM is another audio interface. It is used uh, with Windows as well, and it means Windows driver model. So then audio interface and voice reader is handled by WAS API the latest Microsoft audio functions to get best audio performances and small latency. So less than 30 MS and available since Windows Vista. Um, I don't want to use Windows Vista, but uh, but yeah, it was available around there. <laughs> and then all the OG computer heads know what Windows Vista is capable of, how much. But uh, <laughs> like I said, you guys can read through some of this here. Uh, I'll read through some of it uh, with the Windows driver and I'm reading right here. With the Windows uh, driver's model, WDM, for devices, Microsoft implements an approach to kernel mode drivers that is unique to Windows operating systems. So then I'll just read through some of these right here, the device kernel mode drivers, and then just fully understand what you want to understand and then definitely use everything to full capability. With the Windows driver's model, WDM, for devices, Microsoft implements an approach to kernel mode drivers that is unique to Windows operating systems. WDM implements a layered architecture for device drivers and every device of a computer is served by a stack of drivers. However, every driver is the stack can chain and isolate hardware uh, independent features from the driver above and beneath it. So drivers in the stack do not need to interact directly with an, uh, one another. Uh, WDM uh, defines architecture and device uh, procedures for a range of devices such as display and the network card known as network driver interface uh, specification so NDIS. Uh, in the NDIS architecture the layered network drivers include lower level drivers that manage the hardware and upper level drivers that implement network data transport so very interesting. Um, and then such as the uh, trans uh, transmission control protocol, which is uh, TCP. So that's awesome. Uh, and then you guys can read the rest. It's just you understanding um, what each and every audio interface is capable of and definitely using um, each one. So you can use multiple or you can use just use one. So for, for my case, I'm using uh, WDM and I'm also using um, I was using MME which will be, um, which is the one I went over, but uh, it looks like I'm not using any others. It was it was over here. Um, so I'm not using voice mod much, but occasionally I use MME with, uh, with voice mod. So we mentioned all these, we mentioned MME, we mentioned KS, and then we mentioned uh, WDM, right? So then the last one we're gonna go over is uh, audio stream input output, which is um, ASIO, uh, right? So then ASIO, that's basically, um, a type of uh, API as well and is a computer sound card driver protocol for digital audio uh, specified for Steinberg uh, providing a low latency and high fidelity interface between a software application and a computer sound card. It's pretty awesome. So that's the overview of it on operating systems. The interface supports a is normally restricted for Microsoft Windows. So starting with Windows Vista, K Mixer, it has been removed and replaced by um, WASAPI and a new one. So this is also in um, voice meter, but I don't have it or see it in voice meter because uh, it's not an option here. 
So I'll just say like I don't have it. It's probably in uh, the software which doesn't appear with my devices. The uh, the Wave RT. If you guys want me to go over Wave RT, definitely let me know down in the comments uh, or in the uh, community as well. So the Wave RT port driver. And then there's also a Wine S um, um, ASIO. And then these are different types of API. So when you take an API, you're able to add on your code to it as well and make another API out of it. But like that's like the general case of like how an API would work. Uh, it's something that you can use and take and manipulate and change it to your own API. You know, and depending on the situation, you can have your own licenses and uh, certifications. Uh, mainly just licenses on your own api if you want to make it commercial so yeah um, that's that's really the the gist of it that's like the overall idea you guys mainly want to understand each and every part if you don't really understand it uh it's basically just audio interfaces where they interact with your virtual and physical inputs and outputs and you're able to use them in voice media. that's the biggest gist of this video that's the understanding of it and i just wanted to detail um for all the uh, all the ones that are available to me there's wave rt and there's actually a direct x as well if you guys want me to go over that let me know but that's that's really all of what the video is that's all of the interfaces that uh, i usually use and if you guys are looking to uh, get more down and detailed if you need to if you don't fully understand what each and every one is definitely use the links down in the description read it and understand what each and every audio interface is but i gave you the gist and i gave you the background of them and the history of those audio interfaces so uh, thank you for watching we uh we will be going over um some other stuff of voice meter but the next one will be a zoom so it won't be an actual zoom it'll be me going over how to connect uh voice meter with zoom that will be the next video more of the videos will get more technical and uh it will be the um, uh, eight times X, uh, eight times eight, and the uh, 15 bands going over each and every one um, in deep detail. So that's what's coming up in the series. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments how you guys think about it. If you think I missed something, if I didn't go into enough detail on something, definitely let me know. I'll answer your, I answer all comments. I'll answer all your comments and I'll make sure I'll explain it in the comments or if it's really a big hole. I'll make another video separate from that and go over uh, Wave RT or DirectX. So definitely let me know. Uh, communication is key in CYB, CyberConnect. And uh, we're launching a video. I mean, we're launching a website pretty soon. And we'll be making a whole lot of stuff around that. So other products and services available on CyberConnect.com. So thank you so much for watching. Take care.